Hey everyone, welcome back to part 12 of the full stack trading app tutorial. In this video, we're going to modify the opening range breakout strategy and we're going to add the ability to short the opening range. If you'll remember, when we first coded the strategy, we took all long trades, but since the overall all market has been leaning a bit bearish lately, and also uh, we're entering the election week where things can go either way, I think it's important that we add the ability to uh, short the opening range. So that's what I'm gonna focus on in this video. And while doing that, we're gonna go ahead and fix a couple of small issues that have appeared in the app since we've started this tutorial. Uh, before we get started coding, as always, I want to thank the few people that donated since the last time. So buymeacoffee.com slash part-time Larry if you wanna contribute. So thank you to someone, another anonymous donor, bought me five drinks, said you rock. Thanks, you rock too. Uh, Lars, who bought three drinks, and he said it's a great resource for uh, Python and finance. So I appreciate that, Lars. Thank you very much. And E. Irvin one who is Eric Irvin, said thanks for giving back and that I'm a good teacher. And he's thinking of doing something similar for financial advice and portfolio management to give back. And so that's Eric Irvin. I've actually talked to him uh, on the phone before uh, about some things he's working on. And uh, yeah, I recommend checking him out. Cool guy. Uh, he is starting up this startup on ramp invest on ramp for advisors. So it's on, on ramp invest.com. If you want to check out what he's doing, I was actually wearing the shirt last time that he sent me uh, no sponsorship or anything here. It's just, uh, we both had talked and he likes what I'm doing and I uh, like what he's doing. So, uh, thanks a lot, Eric, for contributing to the channel. And definitely, you know, if you do have time, then, uh, yeah, I recommend anyone that has something to share or, or an interesting story. Uh, as Eric, Eric, someone that started a couple of uh, companies and ETFs uh, himself. So uh, yeah, he definitely has unique experience to talk about. So, you know, that's what YouTube f is for. It's just sharing your own personal uh, experience and you'll find that a lot of people uh, find value in it. And I know I certainly uh, have found that a lot of people have said that I have something valuable to say. And so, yeah, you never know, just put something out there. So uh, thanks a lot again, Eric and anyone else who uh, donated. And let's go ahead and get started with some code here. The first thing I want to address is from the charting and filtering video. Both uh, a couple of people noticed this who were following along. So I'm glad people noticed this stuff. That means they're actually uh, trying this stuff out. So both Michael Streck and James both noticed um, there's a lot of cases where I'm using date time dot today. And if you run this on the weekend, sometimes uh, it doesn't actually apply because it's looking for like today's price, right? And if you run this on a Saturday or Sunday at the moment, right? I was coding this on the Friday, so it all worked. Uh, but if you run some of this stuff on Saturday and Sunday and it doesn't find a price, for instance, for the current day, then it's gonna just return an empty set. So the first thing I wanna do is address this. So um, if you load up the web application, right? Uh, it's running, but if I, Try to filter to new closing highs, right? Our filter, if you look in our main.py, um, new closing highs, it's selecting where the date equals date.today.iso format. But today, this is Sunday, uh, November 1st right now. When I'm recording this, uh, it's returning no results because there's no prices for Sunday because the market's closed. And so one way to address this is to just get the most recent day where there are prices in the database. So instead of using uh, this parameter here, we can remove this question mark and uh, remove this parameter here. And for the query, I can just write another subquery in here. And what you can actually do in SQL is do select uh, max date from stock price. And what that'll do is find the most recent date, the maximum date, um, in this table, and then it'll just select where date equals that date. And so it'd be October 30th in this case. And so if I replace all of these current dates here, right, and replace the question mark and just put these uh, select max date from current date or from stock price, um, and then that one's okay. And then this one is another one where we'll wanna do that and do like that. And then now if I reload it, let's see. All right, so now you see I have rows, I have RSI, and my filter is new closing highs, and then I have my most recent uh, tulip indicators here, my re most recent closing price, the RSI, and some simple moving averages uh, that we stored. So that's all working. 
Another thing that you might have noticed if you're following along and using this already, right? When I click new closing highs, it is going to new closing highs, but also this little select box resets over time. And we want to have it like stick so we know which filter is active, right? And so since this filter is in the query parameters or in the URL, uh, let's just make this uh, select dropdown selected. So let's have it the selected state on new closing highs if the filter is new closing highs. And so to do that, let's go to our um, index.html where we have the select with the dropdown. And then we can uh, actually, let's just print out what it, so we pass the request object to the template. And so if I put request.query params like that and print it out, you'll see it has filter equals new closing highs. So it displays it and I'll do dot uh, filter like that. And you see it just says new closing highs. And so let's go ahead and just match these two things up. So I'll say, I'll take this and I'll say, um, if request.prams.filter equal equals a new closing highs, um, then we'll go like that. And then we'll go and if, and then we go selected equals selected like that. And when I do that, you'll notice it has a new closing highs remain selected. And if I inspect that, you'll see uh, why that works. So you'll see under filter uh, option selected equals selected like that. Likewise, I can take the same uh, if condition from the template and I can put it on a new closing lows like that. And if it's equal to new closing lows, then I can do selected equals selected again. So I'll do that new closing highs and new closing lows. So it sticks. So that should be good now and there's less ambiguity and we don't have to like reset this filter over and over again. So uh, that's another good change. Another thing to fix that I've noticed is if you look, if you've, if you've clicked some of these symbols, you'll notice that we do uh, pull up a chart. So if I clicked square, for instance, right, we load this trading view widget with a chart for square stock. But if I go back to uh, some of these ETFs. So uh, some of these stocks, for instance, SPY of all things, if I click it, uh, and then one thing you'll notice I have, I left this little caption for Apple chart under there. So let's go ahead and knock that out. So in our stock detail, uh, we can take this widget and where does it say Apple? A, so there's a little copyright, you can throw that out the way. So comment that out or delete it. Okay. And then notice the chart doesn't actually come up either because it accepts an exchange and a symbol. And this uh, exchange that we store from Alpaca, ARCA, uh, apparently that's not what uh, TradingView expects. So what I've found is that TradingView seems to want AMEX as the exchange in this case. So uh, let's do that. So almost all the other exchanges I think work, but so I put this symbol and you put the exchange and then the stock symbol. And so uh, let's just say if, if stock.exchange equal equal ARCA, uh, we're just gonna handle it slightly different. Uh, else we'll just do the exchange we already have. Okay. And then I'll do an end if here. Okay, and so L stock exchange. So right here, I'm gonna put AMEX. Okay, and when I put that, you notice uh, SPY comes up and that fixes um, a lot of these I've noticed. Uh, for some reason, it wants AM AMEX instead of ARCA. Okay, uh, even though ARCA is what we get from Alpaca. So um, if someone has a better explanation of that, let me know. Hey, look at me. I am wearing a different t-shirt and I'm wearing glasses now. Something's different. What? changed well it's actually monday night right now why is it monday night i thought you said you're recording this sunday well um i actually started coding the strategy or expanding upon our opening range strategy to short some selected stocks and i was going to show how to do that and i actually let it run uh, this morning and it turns out i had another bug and if you look here 
uh, you'll notice uh, I was logging. I have this trade log now where I'm showing the timestamp of what it's doing and whenever it actually places a trade. And you'll notice uh, on the West Coast here uh, at 6.30 a.m., that's when the market opens. You'll notice one minute after the market opened, my first, so VMware was an example. So this is what happened today with VMware of a stock that I selected to short. One minute after the market opened, I immediately, uh, I was immediately in a short trade. Uh-oh, I didn't plan to do that. We were waiting until after, you know, the first 15 minutes or the first 30 minutes. Why did it place a trade after the first minute? It turns out another bug here. And there's so many things like this to look out for. You'll, if you'll remember this weekend, uh, the there was the clock uh, fell back, right? There were, we spring forward and fall back and it's daylight savings time. And you'll notice in the code, we were checking 930 with this minus four offset in New York time. But when this uh, this time change happens, it actually returns 9.30 with this negative five. And so all our comparisons to see what time it was, all of a sudden that's thrown off and, I, and it looks like it's after the opening range now. That's the first minute bar and it tries to enter a short trade um, right there. And it looks like the range is exactly, the high and the low is right there. So it already tries to place a short trade and our whole algorithm is thrown off by this. So I thought I would share that, but also uh, go ahead and start a new video uh, where we talk about uh, time zones and how to handle this, and also just focus on the strategy in that video. I had started with UI fixes, and I think it'd be good to just cut that video short, this video short, and just uh, leave it at just those small UI fixes, and then the next video we'll talk about updating the strategy. So uh, sorry about that, but you know that's how it happens. I'm coding this as we go and dealing with things as they happen, and it happened to be uh, the clock happened to move and cause this bug. So it's good to run into these real world type of things that you'll face and figure out how to fix them. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, and stay tuned for the next video, which I'll post right after this.